Hi guys, Glader here. So today I've got a really interesting video for you guys. It's going to be about World of Warcraft server emulation. And in the past, on my YouTube channel, I've done some videos on World of Warcraft client emulation. And this was done with a .NET slash C Sharp project I started a long while ago called Freecraft Core, which was basically to take design inspiration from a lot of stuff that Blizzard had put out about the stuff that they'd done for World of Warcraft and networking, the architecture and design for a few things, and basically implement a .NET C Sharp common library that could be used for server and client emulation. That was a Unity 3D client where you could connect to Trinity Core, and I've, I've got a demo of that working on my YouTube channel if you want to go check it out. I know that my YouTube channel is all over the place with a bunch of random ass projects, but actually, a little while ago, I unified two of my largest projects, longest large running projects, the World Warcraft Client Emulator and the Fantasy Star Online Client Emulator. And they were all unified under a project called GladNet3, which was the third iteration of a networking library that I've written for several years now at this point. Gosh, it feels crazy to say. And this iteration has an emphasis on providing a pipeline architecture, or API, I don't know, that's probably a better word, for emulation. You basically create a pipeline in which buffers pass through, and you can act on the buffers, control it, the buffers in certain ways. And you can set that up, let me show you. For example, right here, here's some actual code that wor works and runs. This is a demonstrate. This is demo code that I'm going to show you later. We're going to run it, and connect to the server. Um, you're not. <laughs> we're not going to do too much. We're not going to communicate too much with the server, but it's just going to be a proof of concept. I literally wrote this today. This is the first few, maybe ten minutes. It's actually working. And so the idea was, I want to work on emulation in so many games and projects. Network emulation, not just not like console emulation is very different but and so one of the common problems was you'd have to rewrite so many of the same things and essentially create so much of the same stuff I wanted to create a common networking layer in which you could communicate to servers or clients through and you could also the idea was to also use it for new stuff as well it didn't have to be for emulation but it offers a lot of features for emulation. And so I've got videos of the Fantasy Star Online client connecting to actual Fantasy Star Online servers. Uh, it works. The, this emulation client works. I also have a video showing it working on World of Warcraft. I still have the little test demo here called the Authentication Client. But today, today, after a few hours, I think maybe four hours, I put together basically a prototype for server creating a, a emulation emulated server and you'd be surprised it actually uses the same client stuff the same client pipelines and everything which you can see here and if I pull up the project like this is gonna be really technical but we're gonna get to the demo uh, here it is it's actually just a single class uh, and it's not like a bulky class just 150 lines to add the ability to create emulated TCP servers. Now, GladNet isn't tied to any specific transport mechanism. Um, you can, as you can see, we've got you have a folder for client servers. There's only two implementations. There's a .NET TCP client, .NET TCP server. Now, it's designed to create, to provide APIs for you to implement your own. So if you wanted to create a UDP or something very specific, you could. But right now, this is what we have. And so, I threw together this real quick. This is first iteration. There's a lot of stuff that has to be done. There's a lot of to-dos, and but it works actually, um, surprisingly. And so I've created this little test project right here, where we boot up the server, started on the auth port that you guys might be familiar with from World of Warcraft. But we start the server, just begin listening. Nothing fancy there actually. Quite simple code. And so when a client connects. Uh, you're going to get dispatched some stuff where, like, hey, do we want to accept? Uh, there's some ugly code up here that's just just for the test to 
gather up the packets so we can register them for serialization. Um, and then we have the actual core of the client, like the peer creation. If you want to call it a peer or a session or whatever you want to call it. You could also just call it a client connection. Right, right here, when we would create an incoming client pipeline. And this is what we do here. This is similar to what we see on the client, the test client. Uh, and it, this is the pipeline stuff I was talking to you. There's several, let me show you, there's like, well, there's not too many there, but go here. You know, you can add a bunch of functionality and it, and it can be expanded. Um, and this is where you'd register, like you'd create your own, you create your own network client as well. You get a whole bunch of stuff. You see there's some extension methods down here. You can add a bunch of functionality. And as I expand to other games, I'll add more functionality needed for the pipeline to support the messages coming in. And so yeah, and then we have some Whenever it receives a message, basically gives you the context of the message, the network client, and the message. And so the idea is the implementer is supposed to do the routing and stuff, and the message handling. And there's also an API for that in GladNet, which uh, which is seen extensively in the Booma proxy project, which is for Fantasy Star Online. Uh, let me show you. Here's a handler. So basically they're routed to handlers that handle messages of a specific type. And then the handling is done here. Now this is a client handler. So for, for Unity 3D specifically. And so it'll be a little bit different on the server. But it's essentially the same. But for now we just have a little demo thing here. Where we're just uh, tell, saying we received a message. What type is it? And then if it's a certain type, we're going to write something to the screen. So we're only, I'm only sending, receiving a message. That's it. Just a, just the very bears of a prototype. Just to see that, you know, we can actually receive something from the actual World of Warcraft client. Oh, that's quite annoying. Let's turn that sound off. And so we'll go ahead and run this. And we'll see what happens. All right, looks like that's running. So let's go ahead and hit enter. And you can see we got a client connection from this machine and we received the auth logon challenge request. And I went ahead and logged the actual build that we're sending with this, which is 3.3.5. Now if you actually take a look at this, you'll see that this pack is fully implemented using a serializer that's took design inspiration from protobufnet a project that I contribute to te technically I guess <laughs> and uh, freecraftcore or no sorry jam which is something that blizzard wrote some guy named Joe at blizzard and basically that's the result that we get here we get a very dotnet idiomatic uh, serialization library that supports World Warcraft protocol, and that's why you see all of these attributes right here to indicate, you know, how the data is supposed to be serialized. And we can just read uh, actual DTOs, write DTOs. You know, we don't have to worry about writing bits and bytes, stuff like that. And so, yeah, that's what that is. So, wow, this is a. Uh, I didn't think I'd be able to do this in just a couple hours because there literally was no support first server emulation gladnet 3 until a few hours ago now we're actually receiving messages just just 100 lines later a few hours later we're receiving messages from the actual world of warcraft client and we're interpreting them and understanding them and managing connections which right now isn't done efficiently but of course this is just the first this is just a prototype very it's just the first implementation oh that didn't look good why are we using so much CPU right there? I'll have to take a look at that. That definitely looks not not right. I don't know what's causing that. Yeah, you can see there's definitely there's definitely probably some probably some weight somewhere. I'll go ahead and take a look later. But 
yeah, that's it for that's it for today. I thought this would be a neat little video to share with you guys. I don't do too many I don't do too many like uh, software or emulation videos lately. I've been doing a lot of VR chat and stuff. People probably think I just like I don't know make some crap for VR chat and that's all I've ever done because <laughs> it's been most of the stuff I've done or level design stuff. But yeah, um, I'd like to get back into this. I, I want to, for several reasons, I want to be able to support uh, server emulation and also networking for, you know, building server sides and stuff for Gladnet 3 because it's something that it lacks and it's pr kind of important in emulation. People don't, people usually don't even want to make clients. You want to be able to support servers as well. So this is the start to that. But that's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Hopefully it'll be interesting. This one was probably not so interesting to most people, but hopefully there's a few software developers out there who got something, something out of this. Until next time.